Hiya, hello. Can people hear me? Hi, oh yeah, I think the camera is on. Hi. Oh, you can hear me okay, that's great. Is the volume okay? Is it not like too quiet or too loud? Oh, hi. That's so great to see all of you. Oh, great, thank you for conf confirming. So I can see some familiar names. Um, it's really fun. I don't know if you got the notification from Instagram or from YouTube and what made you come here. Volume is perfect. Thanks, Juliet. Erica, nice to see you. Joan. Oh, wow, there's a lot of you. That's that's really great. Um, so yeah, this is my, my first stream uh, ever. I've never streamed on any other platform. Um, so I hope that you bear with me while I do this. I have a few things I, I'd like to try, so um, I might try to put some background music at some point. And I also have a couple of different camera setups where um, I'm gonna hopefully show my knitting at the same time. So we can really just feel like we're all together. I hope that you guys have some knitting as well. Uh, let me know maybe where you're coming from. I'd love to know that. Uh, it's 6 p.m. here in the UK and it's already pitch black dark. So yeah, I'll take my knitting here and I'll start working on it. I think there's, I don't know, maybe 20 seconds delay with the chat and the stream. So if I don't reply to you right away, that's uh, because it needs to make your way there. Oh, Juliette, working on your porcelain sweater. That's amazing. That sweater has been making the rounds all over Instagram, hasn't it? Oh, some Quebec, Canada. Diane. Is it Diane or Diane? Are you in the French or the English part? Yorkshire, Alberta. A glass of wine. That's great. <laughs> Germany, Missouri, Derby, Ireland. There's a few folks from Canada, Vancouver. Oh, Belgium. Book with Alex. That's great. I'm from Belgium, so... Are you from Wallonie or Fl Flanders, <laughs> Wales, Toronto? Oh, working on the Earth Pullover, that's amazing. That one is on my list. I wanted to do it this summer with the recommended yarn that was like the cotton merino, but I think I'm gonna wait for next season and see if there's more combinations of marling that we can do with different yarns, like maybe the Knitting for Olive cotton merino. That would be maybe offering more options than the, um, oh, what's her name, Saona, her yarn. Edmonton, Canada, Finland, Germany. There was a, a lot of people from the from Germany last time in our knit night, so that was quite fun. Rome, Italy, Moby sweater for your boyfriend. That's great. My boyfriend just requested a, a Moby sweater, so I think he we agreed on Peruvian Highland wool for, for the yarn for the Moby because I, I don't think men really want mohair in their sweaters, do they? Um, Luxembourg. I was born in Luxembourg. Hi, Danielle. That's that's really fun. Small world. Like I don't know many people that mention Luxembourg either as a place that they were born in or live in. California, Maryland. Oh, Wallonia. Me too. Wallonie. So French speaking, I assume. That's great. I, I've met a few Belgian people here in the UK, but they were all from Flanders. And I feel like because of the language bar barrier in Belgium, I don't really identify much with people from Flanders. Like, I feel like th they might as well be from a different country. I don't know if people from countries that have two official languages feel that way about that. Um, Erica, southeast of England, working on the Louvre sweater. Great, I hope that you chose a yarn that you're gonna be happy with. I know you've been having lots of troubles with your yarn choices. Ohio. Darkest Sweden. Yeah, I can imagine it being dark over there. Lithuania. 
um, getting ready for some tests, so won't be here long. That's fine. You guys can stay as long as you want. It, it already means the world that, that so many of you showed up for the beginning. Uh, obviously, you can leave at any time and you can come back. <laughs> I'm thinking of it taking two hours, but uh, yeah, this is my first time, so we'll really just see how it is. And then if it's too much, next time I'll do a, a shorter one. If it's fine, we could do longer ones. But I hope to do more of these in the future. I'm working on my cumulus tea. That's great. Uh, I got the pattern for that. Someone gifted it to me. So I'll be making that one um, this summer, probably in knitting for Olive Pure Silk. Uh, I really like that yarn and I've made a couple of camisoles with it, but I think I really want a t-shirt in the Pure Silk. Hello from Finland. Oh, working on the Lanark. That's great. Is the Lanark like brioche or fisherman's rib? Is it with yarn overs or is it with knit one below? Or is it both? I think, isn't there a part that you, you work flat and then you work in the round, so do you alternate? Michigan, Switzerland, that's cool. Oh, Christmas knitting. Oh my god, no, not the Christmas word. I, I cannot, it's it's only, it's still Halloween in, in my heart. Manchester on a test knit in Boucle. Oh, that's fantastic. I have ordered one skein of, oh, one skein of Boucle yarn in a pre-order from a hand dyer. Some time ago in August, so it hasn't arrived yet, but I was going to make a little, I think I was going to make the Teddy Clutch by Petite Knit in Boucle. I'd be curious to hear if anybody has used Drops Boucle, if they recommend it, because I know it's basically like the cheapest or most affordable Boucle that's out there, but is it, does it stand the test of time? Uh, Earth Pullover is not marbled, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, so DK just, I, I, I imagine working on socks, Texas, USA. My dad studied in Texas. So yeah, he brought back some cowboy hat and boots to remember that time. What are you working on? Oh, very good uh, question, actually. I'm working on my Syrah sweater by Trico Design MCL, who is from Quebec, or she lives there anyway, uh, in Canada. So uh, yeah. Um, you also feel a barrier, yeah, between the languages. Uh, Montana, Switzerland. Oh, working on the Traveler hoodie. Is that from Andrea Maori? That one, I feel like it wasn't really talked about that much when it came out. And like, apart from the tester photos, there weren't much on the hashtag or on Ravelry, but I feel like it has gotten a bit of a renaissance and people have now been at least putting it on their to-do lists. I don't know if they've been knitting it loads, but I know Marlene from Marlene Knits is intending to make the, I think she's cast it on actually, the, the traveler hoodie. So yeah, I think she's gonna skip the hood. Are you, you're putting the hood, I imagine, if you calling it a hoodie. Uh, first live event for me, Valentine. Oh, hello, Valentina. Yes, I'm so glad you're joining. I hope you're feeling better. I know you were sick today or a couple of days ago. I hope it's not too hard on you and that you're cozy at home. Husband is cooking dinner so you can relax and knit and sit. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the dream. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's ideal. My boyfriend is working the night shift today, so um, that's also why I thought that the live stream would be a good way to keep myself company on a Friday night. Otherwise, it's a bit sad, isn't it? Uh, working on the body of your lento and the end is in sight. Off to Sleeve Island. Oh, that's great. Was it a fast knit for you? Was that your experience? I know for me, it would have been, but I ran out of yarn halfway through, so uh, I didn't get I didn't get to experience that feeling people described of finishing a lento in like two days. Oh, that's sweet. Niterina is also saying for Valentina to feel better today. I'm from the, the French speaking part of Belgium. Si des gens ici parlent français, bonjour à tous ou bonsoir. Uh, with yarn overs. Oh yeah, so kind of brioche. I, I prefer doing half fisherman's rib with the yarn, like with the knit below and pearl below. I find that more intuitive and rhythmic as opposed to the yarn overs, but, and I think it was also the first thing that I learned was how fisherman's as opposed to brioche. So maybe I'm just always gonna prefer it. Same as like using DPNs and magic loop, maybe you just get stuck with whatever you try first. Did you see Knitting for Olive's post teasing a new yarn? No, I did not. Can anyone let me know about that? That's, is it gonna be a new quality? Is it new color? I saw that they're gonna do a charity sale uh, at the weekend, so that's worth looking into as well. You're using pure silk, um, that's great. It'll be, it's for your mom in South Africa. Oh, sorry, the chat is 
a bit too fast. Yee. But thank you guys so much for, for all um, talking. Uh, okay, so using pure silk. Yeah. Cast on my Christmas sweater today. Oh, great. Uh, I got the yarn in the post actually for my Christmas sweater. So that's really, really exciting. Stockholm V-neck in red. Oh, that's going to be amazing. I, I want a red sweater. I don't think I've got one yet. I need to find the perfect shade of red. Like I don't want it to be too orange or too pink. I want a, a true red. And then I want a whole sweater in it. I, I've heard really good things about the Stockholm V-neck for like fit. So that's great. Jealous of you. <laughs> How are you today, Venetia? Oh, thank you. I'm good. I was so nervous for this, to be perfectly honest. Like, my heart was racing before. Um, and then uh, when I put the stream on, it said it wasn't working. And I was like, oh my god, no, no, no. But I think it was because I tried to start it before 6 p.m. And so it wasn't working until actually 6 p.m. So that was a... Thank god it works. I don't know what I would have done otherwise. I mean... Maybe just start a whole new stream and then ask you guys to move over to that one because the chat was working. But yeah, it's nice to to do this now and then hopefully learn as we go. Working on the Oslo hat. Oslo hat, they're the best. I just had to put my whip in the corner of shame because I miscalculated and definitely don't have enough yarn. Now I need to figure out a new pattern. Oh no, bless Pia. That's very annoying. And thank you for coming and for moderating the chat. Um, if there's anything that happens, uh, Pia will keep an eye on the chat and let me know as well. Um, so what what pattern was it? What yarn was it? S sorry if you've shared in your stories. Um, it's hard to keep track. Using drops out like a bouclier just now, it's lovely and squishy. Okay, well that's a good review for now and we'll see if it lasts then. Just finished the earth pullover, working on the Christmas jumper for the kids. Festival yoke sweater by Skin Deer Nets. Oh great! Yeah, uh, the f uh, yeah. I I've seen a lot of her patterns. She's like the queen of color work, isn't she? And does she do a lot of fingering weight, or are they DK? Um, I just watched her latest podcast. She took a big break apparently for from both designing and podcasting. So I haven't actually seen any of her podcasts except the latest one where she was like, "I've not been podcasting for a year," but I like her way of being, and so I'm gonna definitely check out her backlog of all, all the past podcasts uh but yeah I've not, I've not done any of her patterns yet but she's definitely on my radar of designers i'd like to try and she's local so i like to support uk designers uh yes traveler hoodie hope everybody oh sorry the chat just yeah traveler hoodie Started the double button bend on my champagne cardigan. Oh, good job. And you were um, in the knit night, weren't you, Lucia? There were a lot of us doing the champagne cardigan or having worked it or wearing it. Like, it was funny. The knit night, there were like 25, 30 of us and the champagne cardigan, the Marseille sweater and patterns by Kuto Vakika that came up so many times, which was very funny and like small knitting sphere that those patterns come up all the time. Trying to recover from a bad headache. Oh, headaches are the worst. I get that as well. And you can't even knit really. Like if it's just a sniffly cold or something like that, and then you take time off work because you're sick, but you can knit, at least it's a silver lining. But I feel like when I have headaches, I can't even do my hobbies. So like, not only am I not working, but I'm not like doing anything good for myself either. And you're just in bed, which is <laughs> such a waste of time, isn't it? But you gotta take care of yourself. Just ordered some drops out like a boucle. Yes. Oh yeah, making a self-made dupe of a store-bought jumper. That's the dream. I want to get rid of all my jumpers and make them all, but obviously I'm gonna wear them until they fall apart first. Knitting on an outdoor jacket with double-stranded alpaca boucle. Oh, great. I would like to make some more outdoor knits. There's a few patterns by Ozetta. She's got quite a few jackets, or maybe she just names them jackets. Um, but yeah, I, I was kind of wanting to maybe do a pattern roundup for outerwear that you can knit because I think maybe they're getting a bit overlooked as opposed to cardigans. But obviously I need to knit myself some cardigans first before I knit myself some jackets. Um, but I want to make the Nature's... I think it's called the Nature's Cardigan, but it looks like a jacket. Using the Drops Bouclet for a Cumulus Blouse. Oh, that's amazing. That's a really good choice. Working on the test knit, working on... Oh, bonsoir, bonsoir. 
Jenny working on Pearl Soho classic ribbed hat. That's great. Um, I don't know if, yeah, because for knit night, I like to just work on stockinettes. And for this, I knew I was going to be busy talking. So I just chose a, a stockinette pattern. But um, I don't know if when you're watching a knitting stream like that, are you choosing something like easy on purpose or can you multitask really well? Pattern says that you can do either. I'm on a vest kick at the moment. Oh yes, vests are amazing. They're so good. And now it's so cold. You can even just layer your vests, like a shirt, a vest, and then a knitted cardigan on top. That's good styling there. Um, yarn over is much more natural and easy for continental knitters. Oh, very interesting. That makes sense. I'm English thrower. Did the sweater and brioche and didn't know it was supposed to be hard. <laughs> That's great. My first brioche project was the September slipover. And I, I had already heard at that point that it was going to be really hard. And then I found it to be easier than what people had said. So then I was like, oh, it wasn't that big a deal, was it? Which I guess is better that way than the other way where you um, don't know how hard something is going to be in advance. Uh, working on the Woodland cardigan in Sweden. Oh, the Woodland. Who's that from? That name rings a bell. I think I can change to a low chat setting. Oh, oh okay. Uh-huh. Well, no, I don't want to, to stop people from, from chatting. I think it's going to help keep this a bit more lively. Hi, everybody. Did not experience a two-day Lento because I had a deadline knit at the same time. Yes, fair enough. Fair enough. And it, it's not about making knits fast, is it, anyway? I feel like it is kind of a compliment or, like, it's a good thing to say about a pattern when you're like, oh, it was so fast to knit, as opposed to if someone advertises a pattern and they say it's going to be a very, very slow knit. Instinctively, I, I don't think I want to do it but obviously like I, maybe we should fight that because so what if it takes a long time um have I tried pure gint yeah I've made a louver sweater in pure gint and I consider that yarn to be much more like outerwear wool I wouldn't wear pure gint for an indoor sweater and I also found it was very very stiff it didn't have much drape which is also why I would have wanted to just have it as a um, Oh. as an outerwear thing as like a layer for a coat or a big sweater felt very windproof and I did find it quite itchy and the Louvre has a big mock neck which there's not really a way of getting around that is there so I I have bought another sweater quantity of Pierre Gint but I'm going to hold it with a lace alpaca to try and soften it and also still wear it as an outdoor layer because otherwise it'll, it's way too warm like I don't need that kind of warmth even in Scotland, but yeah. Working on the sibling sweater by Laura Penrose and Drops Daisy. Oh, yes, we need to talk about Drops Daisy. Should I try and get some? Because is it the new Double Sunday by Sanders Gower? Double Sunday is perhaps my favorite yarn ever. So if I can find a dupe that's cheaper, I'm all for it. And I want to see, I haven't even looked at their colors, to be honest, Drops Daisy. Like, but I know people have been talking about it and it's been all over YouTube when it dropped. <laughs> pun intended um, oh you got the red from a yarn shop in Alberta it's beyond perfect no orange in it that's good that's nice when you find something great so it was maybe shopping in person that helped as opposed to buying online interesting how people either like brioche or fisherman's rib I myself prefer brioche with yarn over and you find it easier with that motion yeah fair enough um, hello from Boston hello from Toronto Working on the earth pullover. Wow, that's the second one then, is it? Just took advantage of Olivia and Oliver with Fibers shop updates. Oh, yeah. Was that the one from a few weeks ago, I think? I looked at it, but I didn't buy anything. And I think she's doing another one in a couple days. Um, so, yeah. Enjoy that hand-dyed Vieta. Why does the Lento knit up so quickly? Does it use bulky yarn? It doesn't. It uses DK yarn, but it's knit at almost a bulky gauge. So you use, like, I think six millimeter needles I did mine on 5.5 but I think the pattern says six millimeter and so then there's less stitches that are required because the gauge is like I want to say 15 or 16 stitches so it's, it's fast and airy and light and it doesn't use it doesn't use use much yardage so that's why it's faster in theory oh someone replied to you just after yep um oh Okay, so probably do a second Lanark and we'll knit that one flat. Ooh, very brave. But yeah, I have heard that brioche flat is better than brioche in the round, so... 
Oh, the new clay sweater is nice. I am not the biggest fan of the clay sweater or the sweater number 18, the one with the ridges and everything. Like, I know a lot of people like those structural knits with knits and pearls and things like that, but I personally don't like it. So those ones are easy for me to just ignore and not get distracted from my list because I, I know that they're not for me. Um, but usually I love all of Ozetta's patterns. Work in a crochet ripple blanket as a gift. Oh, crochet is so cute. And police box socks. Oh, that's nice. That's, that sounds very cozy. Um, okay, I'll try to quickly go through and see if I'm missing anything. Yes, Double Sunday for Moby Sweater. That's an amazing choice. Good evening, Maite. Nice to see you. Uh, love the life. I hope that you enjoy it uh, as it keeps going. Working on a Felix sweater with a very sheepy wool from Vermont. Nature's Cardigan was one of the first patterns you bought, but now you're not so sure about the highish color. Oh, okay. Good to know. Yeah. I feel like that color is outerwear-ish anyway, isn't it? Like, you wouldn't really wear that indoors. Hello from BC, Canada. Oh my god, what does BC stand for? Showing my lack of geography knowledge. No, I'm blanking, I'm so sorry. Someone feel free to tell me. So excited to catch the live stream. Hello, knitting on one of the 20 plus oops projects, the least card again. Wow, that's amazing. That, that beats me. I don't think I have 20 overall. I have like six active ones and then maybe like four dormant. Can't wait to wear it. Was looking for exactly that when Rebecca started talking about it. Woodland by Anna Joanna. Oh, okay. Drops Daisy is a good substitute for Pyrgans. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. Because Pyrgans has been all over Instagram lately, hasn't it? They're all dropping patterns for it. Going to join in the round for porcelain sweater. Oh my god, that must be such a relief for color work in the round as opposed to flat. I've not done color work flat and I, I have no desire to try it. I'm not as brave. I can't, I can't do it. Round three of the bottom ribbing for a bottom-up jumper. Oh, fingering weight jumper for a men's jumper. That's that's brave indeed. Good luck, Kelsey. Working on sweater number 15, doing cables. Oh, that's great. That's on my list. And I was actually saying that that seemed like one that would be a first beginner cable pattern because of the simple cables. I hope you enjoy it. Um, haven't tried the Sunday, but Drops Daisy is very soft. That's good to know. Daisy is great and worth it. Just finished the Eva in Pier Gint. Yeah, I want to do the Eva and I'm actually finding some yarn to, to replace the Pier Gint, but I really wanted the Eva in a drapier wool. How are you enjoying knitting with unspun yarn? I'm, I'm doing double strands because it's coming as a double strand from the Manchalopi, which is making things much easier. I know Marlene is making hers with just two plates and she's pulling from both of them and she's having much more issues with the breaking of the yarn, but I'm, I haven't actually had the yarn break on me except for when I was doing the tubular bind off. So that was quite satisfying that it came double stranded. Um, and I only had to buy three plates. Get the Daisy Girl, love your in-depth yarn knowledge. Thank you. I'll do it for work. <laughs> um, no, nah, I was just now. All right, okay, yeah. So the yarn shop has, the, the yarn drop for Olivia and Oliver Fiber has just dropped. Okay, good to know. Is Double Sunday bleeding a lot? No, I have not had issues. I made a Marseille sweater that was like red and white, pretty much red, and it didn't bleed whatsoever, and neither did it in my water. So personally, I can say that it was fine. Bye for now, I must run. It was great. Well, hi, Norma. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And another review saying that it wasn't too high, uh, it wasn't bad with bleeding. Using one strand of knitting for olive merino and one for knit. Oh yes, yes, I remember you saying that yarn combination. Merino and pure silk held together. That sounds amazing. I don't think it'll be itchy, it'll be fine. Um, no bleeding with double Sunday. The tweed. Oh, does it feel softer than the normal pure gint? That's great, because the sweater quantity I have is of pure gint tweed. So, yeah. Oh, and Pyrgin bleeds as well. Oh yeah, I remember mine bleeding. I did mine in um, like anthracite, which was 1088 numbers. And the water was very dark and muddy afterwards, but I didn't use it for color work, so I can't really say that. British Columbia, thank you guys. Oh, my, my father is here. <laughs> my dad is in the chat, people. Okay, that's funny. Sorry if, if I just dox him, but yes, hello, mom and dad. <laughs> oh. What's my favorite saddle shoulder? Oh, well, the um, 
Lake Spillover is above the drone, in my opinion. The drone, I thought it had too much fabric in this underarm area, and the legs was the perfect amount of oversize. And then the Dartmoor I've made, but I wouldn't consider that one to be a um, saddle shoulder. It's more of a drop shoulder, but I, I love it. Absolutely love the, the Dartmoor. And actually it's good weather to start wearing that again. Thanks for the honesty regarding Pure Gint. I know, I have seen a lot of influencers calling it soft and it is absolutely not the quality I would describe Pure Gint with. Like I would say it is um, sturdy, durable, windproof, but it's not soft. And comfortable is like debatable so obviously everything is always subjective but yeah what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try and change my camera so you guys can see what i'm knitting let me know if this is an awful setup and if you prefer the other way of doing it but i thought that this could be quite quite fun to do and also i've not even been knitting because i've been looking at the chat thank you so much for, for chatting guys like it's amazing that you're sending messages i wasn't sure what to expect in terms of like numbers and everything so yeah, it's great that there's so many of you and that there's lots of questions and interactions. So, um, anybody know if Big Knitting Designers joins Black Friday sales? I know that Sari Nordland does a Christmas Advent countdown. And so for 24 days, she was doing one pattern discounted from the 1st to the 24th of December. And that was amazing. They were usually um, <clears throat> knitting patterns from like winter as opposed to summer. So if you had your eyes on some winter patterns, maybe wait for Sari's advent sale. And I think um, Lily Kate makes also made an advent sale. So yeah, I don't know of any designers doing Black Friday though, but I feel like I'm kind of, I, I, I've been saying I should do it and I haven't yet, but I want to start keeping a spreadsheet of designers that do sales so that I know if I should just like wait for like a birthday or anniversary sale. Because for example, Petite Knit and My Favorite Things Knit, where they 99% have never made any sales and it's really not in their usual like pattern of behavior. So I know that I can just buy those anytime. But Sari, she does a lot of sales. So usually I don't, I don't buy Sari's patterns full price and I just wait for them to go on sale. But yeah, if anybody knows of any Black Friday deals, put them below. Uh, and maybe I could make that spreadsheet like a, a shared one. Would that be cheeky or like would people be interested in like one big Google Docs where everybody could share tips and sales and stuff like that? Anyway, good to hear that you like Double Sunday. I bought some in cream and red for a seaside sweater. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, they've got really nice color for Double Sunday. Anyone tried Weekend Hat by Petite Knit? Do I need to make a gauge swatch? I would just start the hat to be honest and then measure that for your gauge because it'll probably take you as much time to make a gauge swatch than it would yeah um but also because it's ribbing you probably can it's more forgiving so maybe depending on if you like your hats to be snugger or with a bit more room and if you know that your gauge is usually tighter or looser like for example, I know I'm a loose knitter, so if I was to do a knit weekend hat, I probably would go down one needle size and then just go for it. And then I know that the rib would just expand to fit my head if I had accidentally made it too small. Hello everyone, knitting on the brioche cardigan for the love of brioche jacket. Ooh, okay, I'll I'll take a note of that. Let me just write that down because, yeah, for the love of brioche. Um, thank you, Venetia. The creativity, work and effort you put into your content is showing. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Katerina. I made the hands home sweater last year from Pierre Gint and it softened considerably with wear. Oh, that's great. I want to make the hands home for my boyfriend and I'm going to make that in the woolly net merino held double. I originally wanted to make the other one, the Northland, which was a saddle shoulder, but um, that one requires iron or worsted and I don't have enough yarn to make it triple, so um, not gonna happen. Oh, hi, Merlene. Hello. Uh, thanks for joining. I would love a spreadsheet. Yeah, uh, we love a good spreadsheet. Oh, Refined Knitwear, she did a Christmas sale. Oh, that's great. I've got one of her blouses, the Cassia blouse, square neck with puff sleeves. I love that, like square neck and puff sleeve. That is a very unique shape that you don't see a lot in knitwear, so... I should put that one a bit higher up on the 
knitting list, shouldn't I? Um, Pyrgin softens over time, but they do mean over a few wears or like 10 years, lol. Yeah, that's a good question because it probably would last you 10 years, but if you have to wait that long for it to be wearable, then I don't care much about those 10 years. I mean, my Louvre sweater, because it is itchy, I've not worn it much at all, so I highly doubt it has softened. But I feel like I don't mind wearing that Louvre sweater when it's absolutely freezing. Like, I've always said that about itchy yarns and mohairs. Like, if I'm too warm, then yes, it's uncomfortable and itchy. But if I'm freezing, I could wear anything and I'd be grateful to have some woolly wool on my skin. And I, like, I feel like my skin wouldn't be as sensitive when I'm cold. But I can only talk for myself. Have a 10 year old Pyrgin sweater and I still wouldn't call it soft. <laughs> Scathing reviews for Pyrgin tonight. Working on a skirt just published in Pom Pom magazine. Oh my god, can we have a minute of silence for Pom Pom? If people don't know, they've just um, said that they're closing or like stopping business. So there's just two more issues coming out and then that's it. Uh, there's a sale on their website if you're wanting any of their prints, printed issues. But yeah, it's a shame because I know a lot of designers, like it was their first time being published was in that magazine and things like that. So yeah, it's a bit sad to see them go. I had plans to buy one of their magazines, but online, um, it was the issue with the effervescent and the cloud bow dress. So that's on my list. And that'll be the first and maybe only pattern from Pom Pom that I do. If by soft people mean non itchy, which is what I tend to mean, it's fine with a shirt under and it doesn't bother me on my sleeve, but on the neck it does. Yeah, I think because of my Louvre, like I said, it's on my neck because of the high neck of the Louvre, but I feel like a cardigan in pure gint wouldn't actually be the worst thing in the world, especially v-neck. I highly recommend v-neck cardigans for mohair or pure gint because there's just less contact with your bare skin, isn't it? And then obviously yeah, the sleeves and the wrists can be an itchy part as well. Hi from Toronto. I love Toronto. I'm knitting my first petite knit hat, the Oslo hat. Oh, yes, it's so good. Back to stocking it for days. That, that, that stocking it portion will be smaller than the folded edge, though. Before you know it, you'll be right back in the decreases. We find that we're... Oh, did we already talk about that? Yes. A shared spreadsheet would be good. Making the Eva cardigan in woolen for ply. Ooh, that's great. Are you holding it double then? Mm -hmm. Or holding some kind of second strength? The Hensholm sweater knit up surprisingly fast for me. That's great. Oh, thanks, I made it. Is that Emma? I was just watching your podcast before um, putting this on. And it was quite funny because my boyfriend was in the other room getting ready for work. And he thought that there was someone in the room with me. And I was like, no, I'm just watching a podcast. And he was like, oh, why did it sound like, like you just had someone over? So yeah, I don't know. Maybe you just had a voice that was more like natural as opposed to like, hi, I'm doing a podcast and I am presenting content to you. Like, I feel like maybe sometimes I may have podcast voice as opposed to Venetia voice. But I don't know, maybe at the start when I'm nervous and then I just settle into it. Um, but yeah. Hey everyone, working on the Annelie cardigan, free pattern with drops melody. Ooh, we love a good free pattern. Hi from New Zealand. Ooh, what time is it in New Zealand? We're watching from Hertfordshire, hello. Finished the sweater in pure gint and I love it. Ooh, going against the grain here. The only mohairs I like are Knitting for Olive. Yeah, yeah. I think Knitting for Olive and Tilia are my two favorite mohairs, but also I've like kind of put a cross on mohair. So like, I'm not gonna buy any new mohair, but I'll use the one I have. But if I were to buy mohair again, it would be Knitting for Olive or Tilia. I'm actually working right now on a video that'll be all about mohair alternatives. So I'll talk about Surrey, I'll talk about lace weight, I'll talk about like midnight sole and lace merino and things like that. Like basically anything you can do to either replicate as close as you can the mohair effect or just if you're trying to hit gauge. And I'll be talking about that. So when I say I'm working on this video, I mean I am buying <laughs> a lot of that. No, I'm kidding. I'm not I'm not going too out of my way to buy all those alternatives, but like if I'm project planning and I feel like I could hit one of those alternatives, I think, okay, buy the alternative so you can talk about it. So yeah, 
And also the way that I want to do that video is I want to actually knit with that alternative before talking about it. Like I don't want to just swatch and tell you, oh, it's really soft. Like I'd like to knit with all those alternatives and then let you know how the garment is and if I reach for it. So it'll obviously be a longer term video and I'll probably have to do it in two different installments, but yeah. Um, so great to hear, thank you, haha. <laughs> yeah, and hope you feel better as well. Seems like everybody's sick. Eager to try Pyrgint at some point, but it's good to see everybody's opinion. To be fair, Pyrgint is really affordable and cheaper, so it's not like it would be a huge waste if you made some... I mean, we all have different ways of seeing that, but I feel like I wouldn't... I'm not too sad about my Louvre that I don't wear that much because I didn't need to, you know, sell all my kidneys to buy the yarn for that. Like, I would be sadder if I bought a whole Cardiff cashmere and then never wore that one. So could experiment with Pierre Gint and maybe make a vest or something and just buy, I don't know, like 10 balls. The yardage is quite small on those, so you need to buy a few balls. Effervescent is one of my whips in Red Scroll, Phil Kalana Arweta. Ooh, lovely. And you have some Zakami lace to make the cloud bow. Yeah, it is a lovely addition of Pom Pom. Um, Zakami lace, that's amazing for the cloud bow. I think I don't have any yarn for that, but I was thinking of buying some hand dyed because you could make the cloud bow pullover with just two skeins of surrey, so... And I would definitely make the, the cloud bow in surrey, not in mohair. But yeah, oh, the effervescent is going to be amazing. <clears throat> Thank you for the tip on the Oslo decreases. Oh yeah, you're welcome. Um, for those who don't know, there's a bit of a typo in the petite knit pattern, so um, I put in my Ravelry notes what it should read as, and that's a bit better. Could I put a liner on my Louvre neck with a softer yarn? Yeah, I probably could, to be honest. And that actually would be a very good idea. Maybe I'll do that. Um, if I figure out enough issues with my knits and I make a whole like day out of fixing all of them. Hello from Toronto, working on the Ingrid slipover. Oh, lovely. <clears throat> I've tried the Isiger mohair. Actually, yeah, I changed my uh, answer. I put Isiger right up there with Tilia and knitting for Olive. <laughs> all the Pyrgin slender and you have a sweater quantity. Just just do it. It's fine. It's fine. Um, maybe you'll love it. Maybe you'll be one of the ones that says that it's really soft. Hi from Chile. Mohair scarf. Can't wear it. Oh. Fabric softener. People have said maybe putting it in the freezer. And yeah, like fabric softener or shampoo might help. But it's not like you're ever going to change really what the fabric is. Um, and you might have to use fabric softener on it a few times. But... There's tips worth trying. Oh, 7.30 on Saturday. Wow, you're in the future. That's great. Um, I should be cramming for an exam, but I'm knitting on my daft day test knit. Oh, that's great. Um, that's going to be coming out. Is that the next pattern? Yeah, coming at the beginning of December. That's cool. Do you guys, did you get an advent? Are you making yours with cr scraps? The daft days might be good for scraps. I didn't buy an advent. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I like the idea of it, but I, I can't actually justify <laughs> buying an advent. Isigar is nice but too expensive so knitting for olive is better. Yeah, fair enough. I mean the difference is so... it's really hard like sometimes you can compare things comparatively and say you know like it's better than this but is it by one point? By ten points? So if it's only by one point then you might as well go for the cheaper one. Isigar is the softest mohair I've used. Um trying Surrey, but there's not many options where I am. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, I wish Surrey was more available, like Mohair is. I wish more commercial brands did Surrey. Had an allergic reaction to Isigur Mohair. Can't even knit with it. Oh, that's a shame. Or is it a blessing? Um, so yeah, we're getting a lot of Isigur Mohair recommendations. Oh, Lang Mohair lace is super soft. Higher silk content. Um, more meters as well. Oh yeah, I think I had heard people say that even though it seemed more expensive, it wasn't actually that much more expensive to use the Lang lace. Pyrgint is super durable and have been a solid workhorse yarn in Norway since before World War II. Good lord. That's crazy. And here, to be honest, I'm going to expose myself, but 
when I discovered Petite Knit and I realized that she was having all those like Sunday and Double Sunday collaborations with Sandless Garn, I kind of thought that Sandless Garn was her brand, not just like the Sunday colors. And so I thought that she was working for Sandless Garn and so that everything was as recent as she was, but obviously with Pyrgin having been in production since before World War II, um, I'm wrong, <laughs> very wrong, and Sandless Garn is not Petite Knit. Um, yeah, I would just compare Knitting for Olive to Isiger in the mohair. I would say that they're the same. Um, Unit sells some Surrey, but the selection is pretty small and pricey. Hair conditioner can soften some yarn. Hello everybody from Cheadle in Cheshire, UK. Thank you, Venetia, for all the great videos. You're welcome. Oh, the winter clutch. That's amazing. I've made one little pouch and then I never ended up sewing a lining or a zipper. I really hate doing all those little finishing tasks. I, I just prefer the knitting, which is why I'm not really making bags or seaming things. Like I just really prefer knitting in the round. That that's I don't like finishing things. Drops brushed alpaca. Thank you. I'm not actually sure if Jobs Brushed Alpaca is Surrey per se. I'm not sure what the difference is between Brushed Alpaca and Surrey. Because I know some yarns are being advertised as Surrey and some are just alpaca. Maybe Surrey is a type of alpaca? It would be worth looking into. I know that they're both soft, but I personally think that the Surrey alpaca that I buy from hand dyers is much softer than Drops Brushed Alpaca. Um, and the quality of it seems a bit better because the Drops sheds and just feels a little cheap, to be perfectly honest. I mean, you get what you pay for, like, it, I can't fault it for the price that it is at, but I use it for my Lento and it, it just feels a little... meh. I don't like the Sandless Mohair, um, yeah, Tin Silk Mohair Itchy. I found it a bit itchy as well, although I used it in my champagne cardigan and I, I wear that all the time when I'm cold, so... I think it's because it has wool in it. You're getting two scrappy advent this year's. Oh yes, yes, of course, Marlene, you are. Um, I need to send my my one that I made for Rebecca, and I'm gonna get one from my partner, like my partner for the swap. And then yeah, Marlene is getting one from her friend, and she made one for her friend, and then they're giving away one. I think her giveaway just ended, but that was such a lovely idea, and I love the whole backstory of you preparing something in secret for months, then being like, wait a minute, let me just tell her, and then she's gifting you one too. That was very cute. Let me check my labels. Thank you, Joan. Nomi, I bought a Studio Ghibli themed mini skin set and plan to make my own advent, which means I get to participate in the holiday festivities, but with colors I know I will love. That's amazing. I was thinking, yeah, maybe stash diving and making my own advent or, or even, yeah, going with a friend and, and doing it for each other like that, like would be a really good way of participating in the advent fun without breaking the bank. Because I, I do like surprises, but when you're paying such a price, I realize I am actually quite picky with my colors and with the luck I have as well. Like, you know, when you do like the lucky dips for yarn discontinued or whatever, and they're like, well, just pick colors, but we can't promise anything. Then you just get like all the neons and you're like, well, what was the point of that? I hate this. <laughs> Speaking from experience, I can't commit to advents. I'm so nervous about getting colors I don't like. Yeah. But I, I don't like... Yeah, but I don't celebrate the holidays, so I don't... Oh, sorry. So I don't feel left out. I'll enjoy everyone else's from afar. Yeah, I mean, I'm still on the lookout for people actually finishing projects with Advents. I feel like when you look on hashtags for Advents, you're seeing all the advertisement, advertisement posts. So like everybody being like, all the hand dyers advertising it and everybody opening them. But there's no actual posts of people knitting up their Advents. So I, I need inspiration, otherwise I don't know what to do with mine. And I don't want to make a blanket and I don't want to make a shawl. I want to make garments. So yeah, if anybody has good advent garment patterns to recommend. Or maybe don't, because if you do, then I'll end up buying one. Uh, it's my first Christmas birthday as a garment knitter, so I'm thinking of requesting sweater quantities of knitting for olive. Oh yes, request heavy merino. It's the best. I highly recommend heavy merino. Um, and I, I definitely want to buy more of it. I hope that they come up with more colors. It's alpaca silk with a brush texture that makes it fluffy, which is what you get 
with the Surrey silk. Oh, okay. Have I tried Roma Garn Alpaca and Alpaca Silk as mohair alternatives? No, but I will be looking into Alpaca Silk from Sendless Garn. Bouche Bouche mohair is rare, but also super soft. Ooh, I have a quantity of that mohair in stash from last year for the Cargill sweater, and I've not used it yet because it was so expensive and it was so precious. So I'm keeping it in the stash to look at it, but I need to get a move on. And it's in my winter plans. I'm going to knit my Cargill with Bouche Bouche. Surrey is a type of alpaca. Ooh, I knew it. And then the other one is Huayaka alpaca. It's a separate race. Thank you for letting me know. Hi from London. This is my first year knitting. Ooh, enjoyable. I think I knitted for a year maybe, and then I discovered all the knitting Instagram and podcast and YouTube. And it really feels like two different experiences to like knit without Instagram and YouTube and knitting with Instagram and YouTube. I feel like it's a different experience. My new yarn love is cashmere. I've ordered some today on sale. Oh, it is luxurious and soft, isn't it? Yeah, I I love the Cardiff cashmere. I have a little scarf in it that I wore as a cute little neck scarf in summer. And I have a sweater quantity for the Elizabeth blouse, which I still haven't cast on, sorry. But I'm going to be doing that. Uh... Yes, mohairs that are 40% silk, like Lang Lace and Ito Sensei. Isn't it insane how just like a 5% difference in quantity of silk versus mohair can make the mohair silk much softer? Just because of that really small difference in percentages, you wouldn't have thought. Same for nylon and socks, like 75-25 or like 80-20. Do you feel like you could tell the difference between those? Uh, Noro Madara and Sake in your local yarn shop. Yes. If you have it on sale, I mean, that is better. I wouldn't buy Noro Madara at full price, but I've seen a few shops do it on sale and there's a few patterns I want to do with Noro Madara, so it's going to happen for me and I've heard good things about it. Oh, bubbles and berries. Oh, do you also the lining of my pouch for me? Yes. Thank you. That'd be so lovely. I'll take you up on that. That's so sweet of you to offer. Um, the only difference is that there is more to Surrey. Yeah, I agree. Like, it feels fluffier. Watch an Italian knitter video on creating your own scrap advent. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it, but I am subscri subscribed to her and looks like a fun little video and probably would motivate me to do mine. I'm sure Rebecca might organize the advent again next year. And I was thinking as well of organizing mine at some point. I was thinking of maybe doing mine in summer just to mix things up and people wouldn't be expecting it. I'd be like, hey, everybody, want to do an... July advent swap and yeah I think I'll do that so yeah S spoiler alert did I get my new computer yet yes I am streaming on this right now and it's handling it really well um yeah I arrived yesterday actually so I'm still figuring everything out and the editing software is really hard to get to grasps with and the podcast will be coming out on Monday I've edited it but it's still not a good quality I'm like used to but I'm, I'm happy enough with it and I'll be putting it out and it'll just be a slow process of learning how to use a new computer uh, and a new software it's a shame that the computer broke but it was on its last legs and it's been uh, like three weeks now since it broke so I am over it so yeah thank you for asking sorry I'm late forgot that this started at six. Oh, no worries at all uh, I hate surprises, so I don't usually do advents, but I bought the Explorer Knits Solstice box. Ooh, amazing! Yeah, I feel like a lot of hand dyers do, like, monthly boxes or, yeah, like, themed subscriptions. And I think that would definitely be a nice way to dip your toes into hand-dyed surprises without committing to an advent. I think Pigment and Ply does, like, a season thing, so, like, you get three or four skeins. And they look really, really cool. If I was ever going to be convinced, it would be to do one of those ones. Made a dress from your advent. Oh, amazing. That'd be really cool. Grenouille yarn advent on my wish list for someday. Very moody colors. Oh, that's amazing. I heard of that yarn from um, Emily Curtis from Gently Chaotic Knits. Uh, and the, the name makes me laugh because grenouille is a funny word. I love Emily. Oh, haha. <laughs> yes, advent stripes. Pullover. Oh, did she make an Advent Stripes pullover? I think that's how I discovered her, actually. She had a really, really pretty Instagram post with that. Yes, the stripes would be a really good way to use Advent. 
And even her one, she's got a top pattern, the slanty stripes top or tank, and you could maybe use minis for that. The heirloom quilt cardigan, yes, that would be a good garment for advents, especially the Tweedy bases. Hello everyone, Daft cardigan will be wonderful for advents. You finished your version last week. Oh, that's amazing. Well done on doing the test net, and that was quite fast. Nitinati made a few things with her advents. That's good. That's good. We appreciate the effort. Intimidated by the price for good quality yarn. Yeah, fair enough. I do like that some hand dyers went for four Sundays of Advent with full skins or sock sets. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's much more use in those full things as opposed to the um, 24 mini skins. The scrappy Advent I did with, like, for, for Rebecca, I um, did four full skins with my partner as opposed to getting the other ones. Are lighter shades of heavy merino softer than darker? Hmm, good question. I have the Dusty Moose colorway and then the Fennel Seed, and they're both light and they're both soft. So that's as much as I can contribute to that question. The Radvent is a fun Batwing cardigan for Advent. Ooh, good. Is knitting for olive heavy merino as soft as the merino? Mm, I would say it is different and not as soft. I would confirm that. I think it's not itchy, like on the spectrum. It's not the difference between soft and itchy. It's more the difference between soft and dry. So it's very comfortable next to skin, but it's definitely not, it doesn't feel the same way as their single, as, as their four ply. A different fiber, yeah, confirming there. Color work garment, like the shift again, or striped garments, like the deaf days are good for advents. Oh, absolutely. I've seen some gorgeous stranded color work with the yoke using variegated yarns, and that's really nice. Hi, Vanessa, just waiting for the Kinross for apply advent. Oh, yes, they did an advent. I see that on their Instagram. Heard you talk about it so much I can resist. Oh, yeah, I feel weird sometimes when people say I influence them to buy things. Like, I feel a bit responsible and I really hope that people are happy with their purchases because I don't want to lead people to making bad decisions but I, I try and be honest and I, I don't recommend things without like actually having my heart into it so yeah uh, it, it does feel weird when people say like that they bought something because I said it was good. Ito Mohair has more silk content and very interesting colors. Oh, If I didn't put a ban on buying mohair I would buy Ito then I guess. You made the Radvent and you love it and you wear it a lot. Yeah, it is hard to make a cohesive garment. Um, tried the Rorum Natura Albertine. No, I think that's the fingering weight version. I've tried their Penelope, which is their DK version with Merino silk, and I absolutely loved it. I bought it on sale so it was more affordable, and I would buy it again 100% if there was a way of getting it for cheaper again. And I don't think I have Albertine easily accessible to me, which is why I haven't bought it. But if I could buy Albertine, I, I, I probably would, because I was happy. Julia is going to head off because you have to cook dinner. Oh, well, thank you for coming. I, I will probably do more, yeah, because this is really fun. And it's, it's really nice that you came. And I, I love it when you guys chat to me on Instagram and then I can see your names coming up again on YouTube and things like that. So yeah, thanks for being my friends. You've done this crappy advent. My partner was in Switzerland and you love putting the parcel together. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Uh, I need to maybe think about how I'm going to package everything and if I'm going to add anything in her parcel, maybe from Scotland. She's in London, so maybe I'll, maybe I'll do a bit of Scottish treats. What software do I use for editing videos? Uh, I used to use Premiere Pro from Adobe and <laughs> I can't anymore. So now I'm going to use a Final Cut Pro on a Mac. So yeah, I recommend Premiere Pro, but obviously... Um, they're both quite, they can do much more than what you need for editing a knitting podcast. And it can be overwhelming to realize you could actually be making a feature movie on an editing software when all you really need is like adding text and titles. But once you get your bearings and you know the shortcuts and things like that, uh, it can be really, it can be as easy as you want it to be. And it can be as difficult as you want it to be. I've not tried... I've tried yak yarn for sock and it was really soft, but it pilled crazy and it pilled brown fibers like hair coming out of my socks and that was not good. So I'm really scared of making a yak sweater in case it pills to that amount. But 
on the other hand there won't be that much friction on a sweater as it would on socks so maybe I need to get over my fear of yak but that was not a good first experience with yak that was regia yak merino for ply but anytime I touch yak skeins at yarn shows from hand dyers I'm amazed at how soft drapey and shiny and lustrous it is so maybe I, I need to, to try something else maybe not a whole sweater maybe like a top or a scarf you bought the most amazing cashmere from color mart oh I need to try that I really need to try color mart I hate their website <laughs> I hate their websites it's not well laid out but the prices you can't beat and the ethos behind them like their mission is is amazing and really commendable so yeah everybody check out color mart i think they ship worldwide as well so you probably will still save some money even if you have to pay for shipping because they offer good deals on some good fibers like silk and yak and cashmere you tried lang yak and it's very soft but not particularly warm the grayish tone yeah, exactly yeah yak has this sort of like depth of color that comes from within and that's why it wouldn't work really well if you're doing hand dyed like a hand dyed pre-order and you're wanting a white don't ask for that to be made on a yak base because it's not going to come the same as if it did on a merino uh, knit a, a cumulus blouse in yak it's really soft and light oh that's lovely i, I really want to make a cumulus blouse like everybody's talking about the cumulus tea and blouse and it's such a wearable shape isn't it splurging on my yak a couple of skins for a cowl oh yeah that would be lovely Cowls are a really good way to like get all nice and cozy with a yarn without splurging for a whole sweater. So yeah, um, I know Ode from Bubbles and Berries is on a color work cowl kick and maybe I'm gonna make one soon for this winter. I've made the Burra cowl from Mary Wallen and that was with Jimison Spindrift for ply, which is not soft. <laughs> it's beautiful for color work, but maybe I need to make a cowl in a soft yarn to just snuggle up with it. Making a couple of blankets with your advents. Oh, you guys are knitting blankets. That's brave. That is very brave. I really wanted to make the hue shift by Knit Picks. That's one of the blankets I could see myself making in the future, but it's never going to reach the top of my list. Um, I would find it boring. It's garter, but and it would have a lot of ends to weave in, but I love the effect of the hue shift, if you know uh, what pattern I'm talking about. Um, La Negrosa has a nice alpaca surrey, but it's a bit pricey. Oh yeah, that one is on my list as well, that I want to test out. A thick surrey from La Negrosa. Oh, that's interesting. I know some hand dyers are doing some like 100% brushed alpaca bases, which kind of work as a DK, and I'm really interested with that, and I also need a bit more inspiration on what projects to do with that before I buy it. I feel like I'm not very adventurous with things. I usually wait for people to do something, give a good recommendation and advice, and then I hop on the trend. Like, I don't need something to be the most popular before I do it, but I need some kind of pioneer, like, people making mistakes before I make them. <laughs> it's a mohair next time. That pale blush color that looks gorgeous. Yak yarn would be lovely for a cowl. Surrey is a breed of alpaca with long hair, softer than regular alpaca. Oh, okay, so yeah, that kind of confirms the hunch that Surrey is softer. New sweater from my favorite things can be done in Lang Yak. Tempting, but almost as expensive as a cashmere one. What sweater is that? That she just came out with. I'll be knitting my next sweater with Ito Mohair so I can report back on softness. Yes, please report back on your findings. It comes in cute little balls. That's nice. Impression. First impressions matter. Hello from Newcastle, living in Wales. Oh, I've never been to Wales or Ireland or Northern Ireland. And I'm on that little UK island. So yeah, I need to, I need to, to start exploring more because, well, flights are expensive, but, and so is railway companies. So, but I would love to go to Wales, actually. That would be nice. And I do get car sick though. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, you got a Mac. I'm sure you'll get a hang of it quickly. Yeah, lots of you guys were recommending that, and I, I never thought I would I would become a Mac person, and I'm still not completely converted. I mean, right now I miss I miss Windows to be perfectly honest, but I'll try and get the hang of it quickly. I need to just be cold turkey. Like I just need to not go back to my little laptop I was using in the interim. I need to just fully commit to the Mac. 
I admire you for doing all of this while working. Thanks for creating such a lovely community. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I can't believe how this has grown into a thing in, in a year. Like it's, it's a big thing now. I, I feel weird. Like, for example, I was just saying that to my boyfriend, Ross, I was thinking, if I just quit, like from one day to the next and I didn't say anything to anybody, like if I just disappeared, I feel like some people might reach out and be like, whoa, like what happened or where are you? And it's kind of a weird feeling like that, like that there's a ton of people online who don't know me and, and yet, like if I stopped, not that they would be affected, but like, I don't know. I don't really know what I'm trying to say yet, so I'll, I'll shelf that feeling for now. But it was a weird feeling that maybe I, the feeling that I couldn't just stop, like I'd have to somehow say, oh, by the way, I'm going to be stopping. Not that I have any plans to stop, by the way. It was just a thought that uh, it's become a big thing in a year. Does anybody know of a yarn shop in London <clears throat> that sells Ito mohair? Mm, no. I Maybe Beautiful Knitters? You can check on their websites before going. That's definitely a good idea. Fisherman's rib brioche sweaters generally have little positive ease. For example, my favorite things knitwear. Uh, I think the Lanark is supposed to have positive ease. Um, the coming soon sweater that I'm doing right now is supposed to have between 10 and 15 centimeters. Um, I don't know of any other brioche sweaters. I know there's the, there's one by Andrea Maori that's in fingering weight that looks really cool, but you couldn't pay me to do that. Hi, Venetia. If you could only knit with one sock yarn forever, which one would you pick? Um, can I say hand-dyed yarn? Um, I do like hand-dyed because obviously I could just have all the colors I wanted indefinitely and I like merino nylon. Um, I think maybe... I, I don't like... I think the Arweta doesn't last as long as I would want it to because it's... It's affordable, it's got really nice colors, and I like the like melange, marled versions, but it does pill and felt. I think it, it felt on me really, really quickly. So I wouldn't recommend our Weta for like all my pairs of socks, but as much as I want to try all the sock yarns, I've actually not been that adventurous. I've used West Yorkshire spinners a fair amount, and I do like those, to be honest. So yeah, sorry. Excited to join for the first stream. Yay! Excited to do the first stream. Um, it seems like we've we've pretty much had like a hundred people all throughout, which that's great. I, I didn't know what to expect and uh, I don't actually know how many different people are talking in the chat or if it's the same people talking. I mean, I do see the names coming up, but um, yeah, it, it's so I'm so grateful that you guys are spending your evening with me. I was, yeah, I was worried no one would come, but yeah. The Lanark has positive ease, yes. I've got four skins of lavender yarn on the yak base and it's made it darker. Planning on making the pink fizz, oh my god, amazing. I love lavender, I love um, the pink fizz. I've just bought some hand dyed actually to make it at the Glasgow Yarn Festival. I bought it from Zekami and it's like a very nice melange of um, white, blush, pink. And I'm gonna try and find a second strand that doesn't obscure that too much, but yeah, the pink fizz, I feel, looks um, good on those light colors. Vanicia, how and when did you start knitting? Uh, I did it in my second year of uni, so like 2017, and I didn't like knitting, so I moved to crochet, and I crocheted for like two or three years uh, only doing that. Even though I knew how to knit, I just didn't like how it was. And then I started getting bored of crochet and the limitations that basically it was really good for house, decor and blankets and plushies and stuff like that but it wasn't good for garments and I really had an itch to make some garments so I went and made I knitted a scarf for Harry Potter striped scarf and realized that knitting was actually quite fun and there were lots of different stitches that you could like I think at first I was bored of knitting because there was only knits and pearls as opposed to crochet that has like 10,000 different stitches but I realized that it wasn't just knits and pearls and actually you could do lots of different shaping with all the increases decreases etc and then I discovered Ravelry and then the rest is history because once you discover Ravelry, once you discover Petite Knit and Instagram and YouTube, like that's it. I'm never stopping. 
Oh, the Persian dreams. Isn't that a crochet blanket? I think there's a Persian dream crochet blanket that looks amazing. So it would be faster than knitting, but yeah, that is... It would be hard to choose the colors as well, wouldn't it? Or maybe we're talking about a different thing. Maybe it's, it's a knitting thing, small island knits. Correct me if you're talking about a knitting project. Um, ba -ba -ba. DK Lem's Wool Angora from Color Mart. Oh, amazing. I really need to get on that Color Mart trend, don't I? Cumulus blouse is Ito Mohair and it's 100% next to skin wearable for me. Oh, really good review. Oh, you guys, you're gonna make me buy Ito Sensei. No, <laughs> I can't buy any more mohair. Dreaming to knit a sweater with Lang Lam's wool, but the price is a bit crazy. Yeah, maybe, maybe buy it as a reward for something later down the line. That's why I tell myself for those yarns that are crazy expensive, I just, one day I'll do something that deserves buying that. Um, Cumulus is done with Sennes Tin Silk and it was a mistake. Cannot wear it. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't. Sorry. Loop is a shop that sells Ito Mohair. Oh, perfect. There we go. Lots of people would miss you and worry about you as long as you let them know that you're okay. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, it would be a bit selfish to just, like, disappear without leaving a trace. I mean, of course, like, I don't know, it doesn't cost anything to just say, by the way, I'm fine, but I'm not going to do videos anymore. Um, I don't want to end up on those, like, I wouldn't want someone to make a whole video about me and be like, the mystery behind Venetia's disappearance. Like, that could all be avoided if you just warn people. Um, yeah, I don't know. You guys ever think about those things? Like, like it's really not in a weird way. Uh, I really hope... This is why I don't do live streams. Like, I can't just edit out this. But you ever have those thoughts of, like, I could just disappear, like, live in the woods. But, like, it's a fantasy, of course. Like, I'm never going to act on that. <laughs> What? I really regret saying that. Okay, let's just move on. <laughs> uh, Regia cashmere sock. Ooh, okay. I, I tried Regia silk sock and I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Actually, yeah. I do change my answer. I would use Regia silk as my sock yarn forever. Uh, I've used 225 for the Arboita socks and it pilled like crazy. Yeah, I usually like my socks to be quite dense, so maybe next time I'll even go to 2mm for Arboita. Tin silk mohair feels like drops mohair to me. It was sad because I love their colors. Yeah, and then they're much more pricey, more expensive, aren't they? So might as well get drops at this point. I feel like all the softest sock yarns end up felting a bit. I'm really curious to see how the John Arben Exmoor sock wears. I've got a few of these for color work and I've not knitted them because I don't want to do color work. But I really want to see if I like doing those because I would... I feel like because they're less soft by nature, like it probably would be um, harder wearing. So I'll I'll try and kick my butt into gear and do some John Arben Exmoor socks. Uh, knitting on the stripe hype. Oh, that's amazing. How did you choose your colors? Did you come up with your own combination? Did you get some um, inspiration? This feels like our FaceTime recently. I'm just not able to talk mm -hmm. back, so I'm just leaning back and knitting. Oh, yes, Marlene. It was so fun FaceTiming. And yeah, we were just sending each other voice notes and it was just like the messages kept on getting longer and longer. Um, when you find someone that you vibe with and you just feel like, even though we've not known each other for a long time, but it's just like we skipped right past the small talk and went straight into like, what do you think about therapy and you know what do you think about this political issue <laughs> so yeah that's, that's nice to find people like that I think the same of our weta I use it for the experience of knitting Western Crispiner last forever and Regia and Opal for millennia oh I have not tried Opal yet but I have one skin of it for just a plain color yeah two millimeter needles I do most of my socks now on two millimeter needles unless they have some kind of like cables or anything that will restrict them and make them too tight. Two times I've missed your knit nights, but this is the third time. Oh yay, well, I'm glad you're here. I don't think I'll be doing any other knit nights this year, because there's just like other stuff planned, but um, yeah, probably do more knit nights in the next year, and I try and vary the days and the times to try and make people able to join if they wanted to, and yeah, obviously it's hard to make all of the times that I ever offer, so... 
Regia Opal and Drops Fable last really well. Oh, um, no, yeah, I I've tried knitting with Drops Fable and I really didn't like how they felt on the needles and I didn't even end up finishing. I just thought that they were super rough and nylony. Like, I just felt like I wasn't knitting with wool and I was knitting with plastic, but maybe that's what makes them last longer. <clears throat> um, let's come back to knitting after a long gap and things are so different now. Oh, in what way? Is it like the community or things like that? Okay, I'm gonna have a drink of water. <clears throat> Trying so badly to get the first sleeve of my Direction Loop sweater done that I'm just listening to you and reading the comments. Loving it and you're a natural. Oh, thank you. I love the Direction Loop sweater. It's so pretty. I've seen a version that's like light gray and cream white stripes. And that's really, really cool. And then I've seen one that was light blue and dark blue. And I really, really love that as well. But I really need to be careful of not ending up with a million blue sweaters. And that's a saddle shoulder too, isn't it? The Direction Loop sweater. So, or am I talking about a different one of their patterns from other loops? I think it's a saddle. So I'll add that to my list actually of saddle shoulders to try. Because, uh, it's so pretty. The saddle with the stripes is just amazing. Uh, buying yarn supports the economy. Yes, we're we're helping. We're doing a good for we're doing we're doing good things. Your thoughts on super wash or pure wash yarn? I finished a bulky knit sweater and it bloomed after wet blocking, and now it's a big sweater which I no longer like. Yeah, the first couple sweaters I made were with Malabrigo Rios, which is super wash, and I'm fairly sure I swatched, and then obviously swatching on a four by four inch square. And having a sweater that's like, you know, 50 by 50 inches or whatever, it's just not comparable. And it really put me off making garments. Like you try so hard to make it fit and then everything changes when you dunk it in water, which is inevitable. You're going to have to wash the sweater at some point. So I've, I've never really bought super wash to make sweaters again on purpose anyway. Like I really try my hardest to buy non super wash. Um, and, and it's been fine since. I, I really can't remember the last time I bought Superwash. But yeah, maybe on accident I did, but it is it is disappointing to, to get a whole sweater to bloom and stretch to no end. I always dream of a pause button on life. I think we all need a pause button. Yes, I know, exactly, I know. Like, just a nice, healthy pause. Like, nothing bad is happening, but it's just, like, need a breather. That's why I like when you have, like, a three-day weekend or something. Then you realize how, how life would be so much better if um, you had more <laughs> three day weekends or like if we had like if we had a four day work week, that would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, yes, 100 percent. Sometimes feel like you could just move somewhere, not tell anyone. It's fun to imagine. Yeah, yeah, like it's in good fun. And I'm, I'm so glad that um, Emma, you're, you're relating to that. And I, I didn't just say something like worrying <laughs> on camera. Um, I totally get these what if speculations, so fun to indulge and let your thoughts wander. Yeah, 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 like daydreaming and I'm, I'm sure we all have different daydreams and yeah, it can be dangerous to be like, hey, do you guys ever think about this? And then no one is thinking about that. So you have to like test the waters out a little bit. <laughs> do you have recommendation for Scottish yarns? I will visit Scotland next year and I want to try. Well, Kinross for ply is what I'm knitting with at the moment. Ooh. Absolutely recommend that one. And then uh, Jimison of Shetland Spin Rift and Jimison of Shetland Jimison and Smith Heritage, like all of those ones, the color work ones. Try and do maybe like, oh, then find a pattern first that you want to do from Shetland Wool Week magazines or Mary Wallen or all of those things. And then you can, um... sorry, I got distracted. Uh, you can find a pattern that you want, figure out all the colors that you want as a kit and then bring that back home and do your fun four ply color work. But that's if you're into color work. And if not, maybe if you time your journey with a yarn festival, that would be really fun. And you could come to one of those festival and, and purchase yarn from Scottish dyers. But um, if not, maybe I'll make, if you follow me on Instagram, maybe what I'll do is one day I'll make a story and I'll save it in the highlights and I'll talk about Scottish yarns or small businesses and things like that, because I, I don't have anything top of my head, but I think it's a really good question. And I do want to 
talk them up if I can. You chose your colors for the stripe hype and I think it was Siobhan's mom that helped me pick. Oh, okay. That's good that you chose your colors. I, I find that so, so hard. So usually I just copy someone. Currently frogging a complete finished sweater number 15 and a size extra small and I want to remake it as a small. Oh, thoughts for you. Um, I, I've never frogged a, a finished sweater, to be honest. So I... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just don't have it in me. Um, discovering Ravelry in the community and so many lovely patterns. It was all paper patterns and quite old fashioned stuff. Oh yeah, so so it changed for the better then, Mar Mary Leah. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, I, I find it so different knitting on my own. Like, I don't even know where I would find patterns nowadays. Like, I guess you could go to the library or something like that, but compared to the online community, like it's just so different. And yeah, I know that there's a lot of PDFs online, even some free ones that you can check out that have um, archives of vintage patterns. And I think maybe one day I could do that as a challenge and it could be a video idea actually. And it would be like um, knitting from a vintage pattern and I would struggle. Like I'm sure that would be the entertainment is that I wouldn't be able to finish that sweater because I heavily rely now on modern knitting designers and their way of pattern writing, uh, I, I would do nothing to, I, I couldn't do a book, but, but it would be a good, it would be a good challenge. These are the cumulus blouse in merino hell double with viking silk mohair, love it, so soft and warm. Wow, we're getting so many mentions of the cumulus blouse today, that's great. Saddle shoulder, love saddle shoulders, yes Valentina. I admire motivation to frog that sweater and make something better for you. I'm currently making the sweater number 15 and it's a lot of work. Yes, yes. Yeah, cables as well. But it'll be it'll be amazing to have something that fits you and that you've worked really, really hard for. I never frog something that doesn't fit. If it doesn't fit, I'll never wear it. Oh, you never hesitate to frog. No, see, well, Tia, I, I was with you on that first thing. Like, I, I never frog something that doesn't fit. And then I don't wear it, which is my, my flaw. But I admire you people who, who frog. Oh, silly me, you're doing the elevation loop. Okay, same construction, but without the stripes. Yeah, they have they have confusing names, don't they? But you just love doing all these uh, scandy patterns and uh, they look so, so, so good. And I love seeing, this is going to sound weird, but like regular people do those very trendy patterns because then you get to actually see them and not just staged pattern designers selling their pattern photos and like all the test knitters that got the yarn sponsored. Like I actually like to see normal people doing those patterns to see how they look like day to day. So keep keep coming, keep this mirror selfies coming. We love to see them on actual bodies and everything. When knitting with super wash, I always go down two sizes and never had an issue again. Really good tip, absolutely. I think maybe people need to make that mistake first to realize like just how much Superwash will grow. Like I don't know if you're on Reddit, but there's a Reddit subreddit called r slash knitting. And um, that one you see every now and then like once a month, someone show a before and after photo of like, oh, I finished my first sweater and then I put it in the wash and it like absolutely grew. And nine times out of 10, the culprit is Malabrigo Rios. Like everybody takes that as like their first I got a big sweater quantity. It's my my first time n not using acrylic wool, and it's Rios, and then it bites them in the ass and oh sorry, in the butt, and then it grows. So maybe then they learn and then they never do it again. Superwash sweaters did not stretch much at all after wash. Wondering why for some people but not others. Hmm, that is interesting. Maybe it's also the way that you end up blocking it. Like if people like obviously drag them and pull them and stretch them out as they're laying it flat that's not going to help but if you're very careful you could mitigate some of the stretch good night everyone gotta go grocery shopping thank you joan for coming and for chatting superwash plus mohair usually does not grow that much yes absolutely i think this may be why if i've ever used superwash lately maybe i didn't realize because i was holding it with something else so but, but you've got me wondering, I'm going to go back on my Ravelry now and see if I've ever used Superwash lately. 
Which needle size do you use for Kinross for apply? Uh, for all of the ones I've done, I've used 3.5 and I absolutely love it. But keep in mind, I'm a loose knitter. So maybe four millimeter would be good for you guys or 3.75. I mean, you can just like do the swatch. Um, it blooms a little when you wash it. So like it plumps up. It, it's quite thin right now and it's a bit gapy and see-through. But once you wash it, it plumps and fluffs a little bit and becomes very, very soft, as we know. You bought some directly from We County Yarn. You were fully expecting to pay VAT and it to be very expensive, but magic worked its way and you didn't have to pay customs. Yay! Good job. That's amazing. I never buy from non-UK stores for that very reason. Like, I am not financially ready to pay more than what's in the basket. <laughs> what about Belgian yarns? I don't know of any. I have no idea what's going on in the Belgian yarn world. As much as I hate to say it, I make a big swatch when working with Superwash on its own. A stronger lace yarn helps with the shape, that's true. Yeah, swatching, swatching helps. But like I was saying, I, well yeah, yeah, I made a small swatch and it didn't prepare me for how much it was going to stretch. So definitely making a big swatch. I've heard of some people as well, like when they dry their swatch, they like hang it and maybe put some weight on it, like something heavy to attach with pins to really mimic the whole weight of the sweater that's going to pull on the finished product, which is a lot of effort. But if you're desperate to knit with Superwash, that might be worth it. Mary, where did you have the Kinross for apply ship to? I'm in Canada and really want to try it. Hmm, interesting. I'd love to see a video about knitting from a vintage pattern. It's on my to-do list once I get through my plans. Ooh, yeah, okay, well, I'll, I'll have a look because there's definitely a big archive. And I really like some of those shapes, like the, the fitted jumper. I feel like obviously nowadays, like everything on Instagram is like oversized. That's really in fashion. So, and it's nice, but I don't need... 100 oversized sweaters and it would be nice to I feel like it'd be I'd be really proud of myself for on purpose making a sweater that was very fitted and then getting the fit right because like I don't know maybe it, it, you take some of the, the pride away when, when you say it's easy to make something oversized because you don't have to be as precise basically so making something fitted requires more skill and planning and thought so yeah, I'd love to make more fitted things and the, the few fitted things I've made, I really, really enjoy the fit of and then I think, why am I not making more of these? And I think most of the vintage patterns they might be doing in, in a fingering way, which is my favorite fabric, uh, but not necessarily my favorite things to work on. I think DK, I'm gonna be very basic, but I think I prefer working with DK, but I prefer wearing fingering weight. Um, started a vintage pattern, they're generally one size, so a lot of math to figure out the size. Oh no! Yes, that was to be expected, I guess. They're not going to be as explicit about fitting 12 different sizes of bodies. So, okay, that's fine. I I'm not too afraid of the math. I probably could figure out, and it would be part of the challenge, so. So, yeah. I'll keep that in mind. I mean, right now I was just doing a whip that was very challenging, so I'm into easy knitting, which is why I'm doing a sleeve right now that's literally all stockinette for like dozens of centimeters, so I don't have to think about anything. So maybe when I'm in the mood to be challenged, I'll do a vintage pattern. Hope everybody's doing well. It's already been an hour and a half. That is insane, and I can't believe that that's actually true. I can't believe that we're gonna end in a half hour and I've talked that much. I think my reds are quite, my, my cheeks are quite red. That's because I'm like, I'm on, I'm on it. And it's, I didn't realize there was going to be so much chat. Like I'm, I'm really grateful you guys kept this going and made this into what it is. So yeah, th this was so much fun. I'm, I'm so glad we, we did this. Um, where was I? Roxon, Roxon Richardson. That's really hard to say did a whole series on vintage knitting patterns on her YouTube channel. Oh, thank you. I will check her out. She's such a good teacher. Does hand-dyed superwash grow as much as big brands? Um, I don't know, because 
in the UK, there's a few dyers that pretty much only do non-superwash or are known for their non-superwash bases. And I'm pretty much only a customer to those dyers. I, I really just try to buy the non-superwash hand dyed bases, again, for that very reason. Even though sometimes the um, hand dyed superwash looks better, like the color looks better on the superwash than the non-superwash counterpart. But I just don't want it to change on me. Like, maybe it doesn't matter as much if you're making scarves and things like that. Like, maybe less people are buying sweater quantities of hand-dyed superwash. But, yeah, when you're paying that much money, I probably wouldn't want the sweater to to not be wearable. Um, am I a fan of color work? Ugh, I don't know. I love the result, and I think I, I definitely like it when it's made with toothy yarns as opposed to like round three ply yarns. So, like, I think color work is good with two ply, and like Jimison of Shetland is my absolute favorite for color work. And I've got a sweater quantity for a Mary Wallen pattern, the Brace sweater, and I, I'm dying to do it, but I'm just so defeated in advance of all the ends. Not only to weave in, like, I could handle if it was just weaving them, but I feel like when you're connecting them, there's a gap. So I'm going to have a huge ridge or a huge line at the beginning of round marker where I'm going to have all my ends and all the gaps and all the holes. And I just need to find a way of managing that better in a way that doesn't leave me unsatisfied with that side of the fabric. Or I need to get over it and accept that that side of the fabric will look the way it looks and not let that take away from the fact that it's going to be a gorgeous color work sweater. I made a few color work hats and they were really fun and quick because it's it's addictive. You're just following the pixel chart and making little repeats. And I don't like color work socks. They're too fiddly. I mean, I, I love the result, but it's just like small circumference and tiny needles like that. Uh, and all the ends and they're getting, getting in your toes. So yeah, not the biggest fan of color work socks. So yeah, color work sweater I want more of but I'm not brave enough for it yet. Um, if superwash grows when knitting socks, should I knit a sm smaller size than I need? Yeah, I would say absolutely. Socks especially is a lot of superwash, like a lot of the superwash yarn I have was from socks and they all become too big after washing and blocking. So definitely like smaller size socks or smaller size needle, you will not regret it. I, I almost guarantee you. Um, Good thing about Week Onto Yarn is that they take away UK VAT when you order from outside of the UK. Oh, that's good. But then there's a $20 fee on top of that, so that's not good. I used first time ever a superwash merino, drops big merino, to knit the Sophie shawl in. I love how soft it is, but it's now longer than three meters. That's crazy. But yeah, for accessories and... For accessories, it's not that big a deal if it grows, I guess. And if anything, maybe it's nice to have a very, very long scarf. If, it would be great if you could talk about your gauge calculator. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm planning to make a little, like, downloadable spreadsheet or something that I could give you guys or, like, sell for, like, a token pound um, where I, I could talk about how I adjust my... Stitch counts. So if I if the gauge is 20 stitches and I get 21, I have a little spreadsheet that tells me that I should then do size like s small instead of medium or vice versa. And I do find that really useful. Uh, I'm just I just want to make it pretty for you guys before I give it to you. Um, like there's a spreadsheet that I use, which is like just very ugly and workable for me. And then there's the spreadsheet that I want to show to the world, which will be pretty and user-friendly and everything. So I'm working on it, but it's not like the most pressing, urgent thing right now. Um, especially because now that I've got my new computer, I lost my access to Word and Excel and everything. Uh, that's devastating as someone who loves spreadsheets to not have Excel anymore. But again, I'm going to try and find a way around that. Uh, Abigail, I'm making the Syra sweater by Trico Design MCL and I'm knitting it with Kinross 4-ply and it's, um, yeah, just a fingering way. I'm making a sleeve right now. I've already made the first sleeve. So this is my second sleeve and then I'll just be knitting on the body and I'll be done. And it's been a really, really fun project and this might be the fastest 
fingering weight sweater that I'm gonna be doing and it's because I love the pattern and I love the yarn so yeah glowing recommendation for both the $20 fee was from customs not we count yarn ah okay most of my knitting life was flat made knitting that you seemed I love knitting in the round now oh yeah absolutely I think I made one sweater flat uh, and I hated it <laughs> This has been so much fun. Yes, it has. I'm glad. I hope for you too. Yeah. Um, it's been really fun for me, but I really hope that you guys liked it as well. Hello, Vanny. Just popped in to say hi. I just finished my dance workout and I'll be busy now, but I hope I'll be free for the next life. Oh, Flaminia, thanks for coming. It's so nice that you're back to dancing again. Um, yeah, next life will definitely happen again. Syrah is pronounced like the wine Syrah. Ooh, thanks for telling me. I hate it when I say things wrong. You can still get Excel for the Mac. Yeah, but I think what happened is on my Windows, I still had my student account somehow, so I wasn't paying for it. Um, this is where you realize that I'm really cheap. But um, So I wasn't paying for Excel or Word or anything. I think I was just logged in my student account. And then here, now that I got my Mac, I tried to log in again and then they were like, oh yeah, well, you don't have any subscription. Do you want one? And it's very expensive per month for something that I was getting for free. So I'm like, um, no, um, I'm not, I don't want to pay that much for just Excel and Word. So, because it's a subscription, like I just have something against not owning something. I'd rather just pay it once and then I have it. So yeah, I don't like subscription services. Um, just wondering what, how they know what's in there. Can they open your mail? Hmm, I'm not too sure about customs and things like that. Totally agree about the fitted knit. When I used to knit sweaters, cardigans, I didn't bother swatching, but when I started making summer knits, swatching became very important to get the right fit. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Especially for like the underarm area and the yokes and things like that. Like you really don't want it to be falling really badly on your body. And then with those summer yarns, it's hard to predict how they behave like linen and things like that. So happy to find a live podcast. Oh, I'm glad. My library includes stuff from the 70s, like a knitting magazine called Montrico. Everything was knit flat back and forth. Oh, yeah. It's, it's interesting how those trends change a lot, isn't it? Pretty sure they can open the mail, but not sure. Yeah. You have to sign something that says that they can open it. Ooh, crazy. For me, with superwash socks that grow, I just put them in the dryer and they shrink back up. Ooh. That's good to know. I don't have a dryer, so I don't know. I've never. I, I, when people say that they put stuff in the washing machine, like it makes me cringe. I, I can't imagine doing that. I just have this mental block around doing, um, doing that to my knitting. Like I just, I've never felt it anything by accident or on purpose. So I feel pretty grateful about that because I know that a lot of people. Um, have accidentally lost a sweater in that way and I just don't want that to be me. Any tips for not making yarns tangled when knitting two together? I just don't do anything and then they get like they tangle in my knitting I guess like they, they sometimes twist a little bit in my stitches but that's fine because it's all in a consistent way all around the sweater and then just you mean not the balls twisting I just hold one on the left and one on the right maybe and just make sure that if I'm turning the sweater counterclockwise, at some point I'm gonna turn it clockwise just to counteract that. If I buy the yarn and I send it overseas, they really don't know how much I paid. Uh, ba -ba -ba. How did the pleat on the sleeve go for you? It was perfect, it was really, really easy. Um, it was described very well in the pattern and then there was a little video in French but with English subtitles and I speak French anyway and it went really fast it was just two little lines of instructions like or like it was just a step so yeah if anybody is scared of doing it because of that reason don't be and it's a really good skill as well that could be transferable to other sweaters like you can totally use that technique again in, in and I probably will and you could also omit that that from the sweater if you just wanted a normal balloon sleeve so very versatile uh, can you get some Kleenex tissue? Oh, well, not really, because I don't, I'm not stuffed up or anything. That's just my voice, so I don't know. 
Uh, that's true, unless the value you put on the customs form is hilariously low, they can't really check. Oh, you guys are being very cheeky. Can't wait to see it finished, I love that color. Me too! It's been changing quite a lot over the different pictures that I've taken, but I hope that you guys... I, I think when we take photos outside with my boyfriend, it'll probably be like the true color. Because inside, the lighting is always bad inside, even if I take it in front of a window. If anything, the window blows it out, like, out of proportion, and it appears lighter than it really is, or like pinker. Lovely knitting with you. I'm knitting the Darling Cardigan by Kito Vekika. Oh, that looks gorgeous, doesn't it? I love it. With Ala Fos Mohair Wool. Oh, wow. Google Sheets. Yeah, I think I'll be using Google Sheets. I just hope I can transfer the stuff I had on Excel and make it go into Google Sheets and not lose too much of my formatting. Yeah, Emma, like Google Sheets as an alternative. I think that's what I'm going to do. Like, it's just not worth paying hundreds for something that you can get, especially if I get used to it. Like, if I just um, bite the bullet, get used to Excel, Google, get used to Google Sheets, then I won't miss the other one too much once I get used to it. I have yet to knit a sweater in the round. I have crocheted one and love that. Ooh, crochet a sweater. That's nice. I crocheted one cardigan yet flat and I hated it. So, hi Benicia, only just able to sign on now. Excellent format. Oh, I'm really glad. What's your favorite way to join yarn? Uh, I literally just like drop the yarn I'm using and then I knit in the next one with the new yarn and then I tie a knot between the two strands but not too tight like I kind of like tug on the fabric to make it keep the same tension as the rest of the stitches and then after I've tied that knot I weave the two ends going in separate direction and that's been secure and I've never had anything break on me I, I don't want to do split splicing I just wouldn't trust it as much as I trust doing a knot how old are you uh, I'm 25, I think. <laughs> I think I turned 20. Yeah, I turned 25 in July. It's hard going from Excel to numbers, but after 10 years, you get used to it. Yes, I probably will have to just... It's going to be the year of getting used to new things, isn't it? Like changing computer, changing OS, changing, uh, changing the editing... <laughs> software and then now changing my excel spreadsheets i just have to get used to it i enjoy knitting flat but i hate the seaming oh well at least yeah I i'm not a huge fan of purling i don't know if anybody is i mean there's some people who really abhor it and and don't like it and then there's people who just don't love it but they don't mind doing it i don't mind doing it it's fine but i wouldn't say if i could choose between knitting something in the round and flat i'll do it in the round um, I don't like the subscription. I prefer owning things I pay for. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, for Sura, it's not accurate. It's like, que sera, sera. Oh, sera. Sera. Okay, thank you, Amanda. I will keep that in mind. I wanted to, I was wondering if it was Sira, but it's sera. Okay. You could try Open Office for Mac. It's like MS Office, but free. Okay, I'll look into that. My husband felted my April card again recently by putting it in the washing machine. You have to divorce him. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's the law. That's... That's really sad. But... I don't know, what do you even do with a felted sweater or felted cardigan? I guess you could cut into it and make some drier balls. I heard someone doing that. I think it was Rachel from We'll See Knitting Podcast. She had a whole little crafty video think last winter where she did a whole video on other crafts than knitting and it was like crochet felting and things like that that was quite cute I feel like I've totally neglected neglected the other crafts that I like since knitting like I used to draw before that drawing was my thing if anything like I, I don't know if you've seen but on my Instagram the first few posts are back from my drawing life and I was drawing some Pokemon and colored pencils and I still have all those like items but I've not drawn in years like I just love knitting now 
I think superwash in general does better being washed in a washing machine than by hand. Oh, yeah, maybe because of the spinning and centrifugal force and things like that, wouldn't it? And uh, draining. That's a really good point. Hello, just joined. What sweater are you wearing? Oh, thank you. I like the fit of a slightly lower neckline than making short rows on a raglan. I'm spinning yarn while watching. Oh, that's amazing. I'm wearing the Lyon sweater by Petite Knits. I didn't even mention, but yeah, I really like the fit of the shoulders on that. It was the contiguous method. She did the poppy tee in that same construction. And I think the Eva Cardigan actually is doing that very construction and it was super fun. And I did this in Sunday held double and it's not pilled so far. And I have worn it a few times. I made this quite late in the year, so then it became summer. So that's why I haven't worn it as much. And this is my first time wearing it in the the new season. And yeah, I really like it. Sharing the spreadsheet will also be easier on Google Sheets. Yeah, absolutely. I was thinking that like, that's kind of also why I stopped working on that because I knew that I had to probably switch it over to Google Sheets. So I guess life worked out in that way. Making the Emsworth sleepover by Isabel Kramer in Woolen Flower Devonia. Oh, did you did you buy Woolen Flower at one of the Scottish yarn festivals? I love Devonia. I love Woolen Flower's work. And I have a couple of patterns from Isabel Kramer that I want to try. So yes, we have a lot in common, Karen. <laughs> the moment when you forget your age. Oh, I know. I know. Ross asks me all the time. He also forgets his age, so and he's only one year older than me. So that's why I was kind of confused. I didn't know if I was 25 or 26, but yeah, Ross is 26 and I'm 25. How many hours a day or week do you spend knitting? Oh, very good question. Well, yeah, so I already answered. I do not balance it with other hobbies. My only hobby is knitting. And I watch things, so like the hobby of watching Netflix, whatever. But I do feel like I, I knit a lot. Like I was saying to people, it's not necessarily that I am the fastest knitter. It's just that I have a lot of time to knit because I don't have you know like childcare responsibilities or anything so um oh one second okay so um I knit maybe four or five hours a day like I do it in the morning I do it at lunch I do it in the evenings and especially in winter, like there's really not much else to do or reasons to leave the house. Like in winter and in, in summer, I was going out and enjoying the um, good weather and things like that. So less than that. But in winter, I can really see myself knitting for like five or six hours a day. I, I think it's a lot, but I really enjoy it. <laughs> have you tried Japanese patterns? I think they have a particular style. Oh, well, I have tried... I've done a couple of, I've done the Sari Nordland Kutar, which I know follows this, the Japanese Stitch Bible. And there's a pattern from Andrea Maori, I think the Pink Fizz sweater, which also follows Japanese stitches, but they were still written in that modern pattern designer way. And it was just boring from the Japanese stitches. Whereas I heard that Japanese patterns are different than the European patterns because, um, it's more like schematics. I think Mel Make Stuff had a very good video overview about how they're very much not information heavy. And it's just a big graph image with numbers slapped on it. And it's like, ta-da, good luck. So I think, again, it would be a very interesting thing to try my hand at and see if I can do it. But I've seen, again, Mel Make Stuff. She bought a few books and she showed some patterns from it that looked absolutely stunning and gorgeous. So. It's not been on my like immediate to-do list, but I think I would like to try a Japanese pattern. Like you say, it is a particular style and, and, and I do like it and I like how they look. It's just that it's not the kind of pattern writing that I like, but it's good to challenge ourselves. Knitted socks as a gift to someone in 100% wool, forgot to mention to wash it by hand. They felted it. Oh, bummer. Bummer, bummer. Um, definitely important to mention to people in this gift knitting season. Be careful what you gift people. Uh, love Excel, but really hate Google Sheets. Totally second rate. I know. I think so too. <laughs> Excel for the win. 
You can make good seating mats for outside from felted stuff. Ooh, good idea. Good idea. Or insoles. What is wrong with felted sweaters? I felted one of mine and I'm still wearing it. Ooh, that's good. Good to know. Was it particularly oversized beforehand, maybe? I feel like they like elasticity, don't they? Um, doing the Eva card again. Picking up stitches on the vest. Tried crochet. Need, need to practice. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for joining this live. It's been such a treat. Happy weekend, everyone. Oh, yes, we're coming to an end, but it was really fun and I'd love to do it again. I, I'm i assuming this time was good for you guys because you obviously came. Uh, I would be asking the wrong audience if I, if I asked you. But um, yeah, I mean, the hard part is over. Like it was figuring out all the hardware and software and setting everything up. But I'm pretty sure now that it wouldn't be as much work to stream again, so I'm totally down to do it again. Uh, maybe I would do it a bit shorter though, I feel like this was a lot for me to talk. Like I talked a lot, I, I basically talked non-stop and even when I do a knit night or a knit and chat, I don't talk for that long, so I don't know. Do I ever get repetitive strain injuries from knitting? No. Uh, I've never, but I think there was a time, I think it was last, actually I don't remember when it was, but there was a time where I definitely felt a bit of like cramping in my hands or like the, the claw hands, you know, and uh, that was a sign and I just thought, okay, I need to chill, I need to be careful, and so I just knitted a bit less the next few days, but I think what helps me, and I might be completely wrong, but I, I have a lot of different sized whips, like needles and weights of yarns and materials and things like that so because I keep alternating then maybe it's less repetitive in that sense and because I don't know doing a sleeve in small circumference and then doing a, a neck a neckline color body etc so I'm quite lucky in that way but I've heard of horrible stories where people sadly get injured and have to stop knitting for six months at a time or something and I don't know what I would do if that happened to me so yeah I probably would have to be careful to not have something happen to me and maybe be more proactive towards preventing that as opposed to solving it if it does happen what's a contiguous sleeve is it like a fitted sleeve about the woolen flower at tangled and gala shields oh Oh no, yes, that's great. Sorry for forgetting. Um, it, it, it's so, so good to see people come, come to me in person and say hi. Um, and no, I remember Tangled in Galashiels was such a good day. It was so sunny and it was a lovely little day in, in, the, in the town. And it's, it's great that you're knitting with your purchase from there. Uh, contiguous sleeve, the way that I would explain it best is you kind of do like a back panel like you would for a drop shoulder and then you pick up stitches the same way that you would do a sock uh, gusset after you've done the, f the heel flap. So it's not like you're, you know, making the back panel, making the front panel, and then picking up for s sleeves afterwards. Like you're picking up for the sleeves immediately with that same strand of yarn that you already have. And then that, it does create a fitted sleeve, like long story short, it looks more fitted and it makes you have this line on the shoulder that is very vertical, as opposed to the diagonal raglan line that you would have. And there's definitely a plea for people to bring out more of those patterns because they're a very interesting and good looking construction, a bit different than the usual raglans or drop shoulders. Thank you so much for doing this live stream. It's been a treat. Oh, I've already read that, <laughs> sorry. Um, the Eva cardigan is great. The shoulder construction keeps it from sliding down. It's very flattering. Oh, yes. Well, I love that. That's great because that's the problem with V-neck cardigans, obviously, is, is them sliding down. So I love that. And it, it, it still suggests quite a lot of these, the Eva cardigan, doesn't it? But if you're having that nice fit at the shoulders, I think that that's what makes it look intentionally oversized as opposed to like, I knit the wrong size sweater. 
A few Korean designers translated their patterns into English and they are gorgeous. I really want to make one called the old fashioned cardigan. Ooh, interesting. Made progress on the melange sweater man while wearing the pod while watching the podcast. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad. Um, what are you making it in the melange color? Are you marling two different yarns? I love drop shoulders. They're my favorite construction. Oh, or is it saddle? Can I put saddle and drop shoulders together? I feel like they're quite similar. Thank you for hosting this lovely live chat, Venetia. Have a lovely weekend. Oh, thank you for coming, Valentina. I hope you feel better. <laughs> you deserve a long, cool beer now, Erica. Wow. Cheeky, cheeky. I think I'm just going to have a a glass of milk. <laughs> Black Agnet is next in the queue. Wow, that would be lovely. Absolutely. I, I want the Agnet as well. I love her red poppy version. But maybe something less. I feel like it's quite loud already, like the brioche, so maybe a neutral color, just to make it less standing out. This was a great idea. Thank you for hosting. I can see it being draining. I would be exhausted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think because I've done podcasts and things like that, I think I am used to speaking for a long time. But yeah, people who just stream without having ever done, like I guess, public speaking or whatever before could be quite quite hard but yeah I will drink salt water or take an electrolyte drink oh I will not drink salt water but yeah maybe a hot chocolate or something um well done friend hope you enjoy the rest of your night thank you Marlene hope you too are you working at the yarn shop this weekend or is it gonna be a relaxing one knitting different project with different gauge at the same time helps against the injury okay good to know I'm gonna keep doing that was a great time. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye. Thanks for coming, Vero. I can knit at the moment as I managed to inflame four tendons on my right hand. Oh, I'm so, so, so sorry to hear that. That sounds awful. Hi, Venetia. Great podcast. Thank you for the advice for using Ravelry. It truly helped. Oh, thank you. I really want to make a second part of that video. I'm compiling a list of things I want to touch on, but if you guys ever have Ravelry questions or things you'd like me to demonstrate on the screen, absolutely message me or fire away. I'd love to give the people what they want and like actually answer questions that people have as opposed to just thinking that you guys have questions. This helped me get several centimeters done on a super long, boring garter baby blanket. Ah, oh, good. I'm glad. Melange nav navy and beige. Oh, amazing. That's really great. That's beautiful. Thank you for the lovely stream. By the way, I made my Felting husband buy me two sweater quantities of knitting for Olive. Amazing. That's a redeeming story. That is amazing. He's a good one. Yes, Eva is quite oversized, but it fits perfectly. That's great. I enjoyed this live. This is the first live stream that I've stayed the entire time. Oh, thank you. I'm so touched. Thank you, Venetia. That was so much fun. It helped me through 20 centimeters of ribbing. Wow. That's great. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks for the live stream. Almost finished color of my earth pullover. So a productive evening. It was lovely. Thank you for this time together. No, oh, thank you everybody. Have a great weekend. Recently bought an iMac after being convinced by my husband. I miss my PC <laughs> and you miss Excel. Yes. What are we ever going to do without Excel? But um, yeah, I guess now that I've replied to all the chat, I'll just end here because I don't want to um, get behind and I don't want to not reply to people and also I don't know how to end this stream so no I think I, I know but um working tomorrow but have the Sunday off and we'll film a new episode oh that's good um there's a lot of new podcasts that were released today so I'll be catching up with Rebecca's podcast tonight actually when I finish this thanks for the stream bye everybody have a great weekend thank you so much for coming guys that was so nice and it was lovely chatting about all of those topics. You gave me lots of things to think about. And yeah, thank you so, so, so much. Good night, good evening, or good morning, wherever you are. I'll be trying to end this in a normal way. I am bright red. That is so funny. But yeah, electrolytes will be had. Bye, have a great week.